Now let's look at graphing an exponential function. Graph f of x equals 3 to the x. Use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for x, and find the corresponding values for y. So we'll set up a chart where we have our x and our f of x. Now remember that your f of x value is also equal to y. We're going to take our function and substitute values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and come up with the corresponding y value. Let's start by substituting in the value of negative 2. Now that would require us to evaluate f of negative 2, which equals 3 to the negative 2 power. Recall that a negative exponent requires you to rewrite this as 1 over 3 squared, which gives us 1 ninth. And so we're going to end up with a y value of 1 ninth that corresponds to the x value of negative 2. If we substitute in an exponent power of negative 1, then 3 to the negative 1 power is 1 third. 3 to the 0 power is 1. 3 to the first power is 3, and 3 squared is 9. Now we're going to quickly sketch a graph where we plot these points. Notice that all of our y values are going to be positive as we're taking a positive number and raising to a power. Along the x-axis, we have units 1, 2 to the left, to the right that is, and negative 1 and negative 2 to the left. On the y-axis, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's plot our points. We have negative 2, 1 ninth. Notice that if we move negative 2 units to the left, we're going to just barely be off of the x-axis when we plot that y-coordinate. Negative 1, 1 third would be about 1 third of the way up. Then 0, 1 is our y-intercept. 1, 3, we'll move over 1 and 1, 2, 3 units up. And then 2, comma 9 would be 2 units over and 9 units up. And now we're going to fill in, let's just start at our y-intercept first. As we increase the power on 3, we can see a rapid increase in our y-coordinate. As we make our exponent become smaller, we end up having our graph getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis without ever actually hitting it. And so, this is a picture of that function.